Welcome to my home and welcome to my studio. Today, I'd like to show you my camera. So let's get started. Maybe you're like me. Maybe you would like to start shooting wet plates and you've never used a camera like this. So some basic information would be good for you. I decided to build a wet plate camera because I couldn't afford to buy one. So I went to Amazon and I ordered this book, Making the Traditional Wet Plate Camera by Ty Guillory. He has two different types of cameras. He's got the bellows type that I've made, and then he also has a regular box camera. Um, it kind of fits together like a brownie. This part of the camera is where the lens sits in, and you can kind of see the outline of it here. It's a square. This is the lens board. I can turn this little knob here, the whole lens board comes out and then I can change lenses. The whole lens is screwed into this board. The lens board fits into this, which is the front standard, a big square. It's open on the sides here and the bellows will fit right into there. So the bellows are actually really snug up to this point inside of the camera. Same thing for the back. This is the back standard, that big square, and the bellows go right through to the very back of those bellows. The whole thing sits on this, which is called the tailboard. And very honestly, if I was going to build this camera again, I would make a folding tailboard. And this is jointed in here and it flips up. You can kind of see how big that is back there. This is the back of my camera and it's made out of ground glass. It's held on by some leather triangles just in case the, the glass breaks and I need to replace it. If I move my camera over here to the side, you can see my scene. And then once I take the lens cap off, my scene appears upside down and backwards in my piece of glass here. When I'm going to shoot a plate, I'm going to open up this door. And then I'm going to put the back of my camera on that holds my uh, plate carrier. There's about a hundred different ways to do this. And I have seen all different designs for the back here. It's the concept that matters. A light tight box that you can have a piece of ground glass where you're gonna see what you do. Your glass is going to be marked so that this like right in here is my five by seven. And then when you open this up, you're going to somehow have an apparatus on the back that's going to get that carrier in there. For me, this is my five by seven back. I'm gonna put this on my camera. And then this part here holds my carrier in the exact same plane for my plate where that glass was. Otherwise, you're not gonna be in focus. I'm gonna to try to do this and not get in my own way. There we go. That fits down there. Then when I wanna expose my plate, I'm gonna pull out my dark slide. And then I'll be removing my lens cap. I put my lens cap back on. I put my slide back in. Put my slide back in. And then I just do everything in reverse. I take this out and then I go back into the dark room where I can develop everything. This is a plate carrier. This is what goes back and forth with me into the dark room. This is by Chamonix, it's a brand, I didn't build this. And if you're going to go with this brand, just be aware that their sizes run a little small, just like clothes. So if this is a five by seven, it's actually a hair shorter. So just be careful when you're cutting plates or cutting glass for this, uh, for this one. These are so cool. They're like a little tiny magic trick or something. There's a back slidey thing and there's the front slide. That comes all the way out. So, look at that. Isn't that cool? So, what happens in the dark room is you open this up and then you have a plate and you're going to coat your plate and you're going to put it in. And you actually put it in with the coating side down. And it feels completely wrong. It feels like you're going to smear it up and stuff. But it's fine. It doesn't. It doesn't do anything. Then you're going to put your back on. 
like that. This one has like a little spring thing in there. And you lower the back. Now you're light tight. You do that all in the dark room. And then you come out here, you put it in like that, and then you take the dark slide out. Now it's all open. Then you're going to take the lens cap off of the camera. It exposes. You put the lens cap back on, and then you put your dark slide back in. You take it out. And you go back into the dark room and you do what you need to do in there. Easy peasy. I just have two more things I'd like to mention as quick as I can. Price and time. It took me nine months to build this camera and it took me that long because I don't have any woodworking experience at all. And um, I had to go look up every tiny little piece of information. So it was a really high learning curve for me price. This cost me about $450 to make and one of the biggest expenses of the camera is um, the bellows material. The bellows are layered so there's a material then the ribs and then more material and then you fold that all up like origami and the inside layer I used a pipe organ material that they use for the bellows for a pipe organ because it's very durable because that's, you know, the foot is always going and the air is always moving through that. So um, I know that this is gonna be good for like 20 years. Why build something and then have to redo it right away? The wood that I used is cherry. So I think that $450 would come down a lot because I bought so much extra wood that I could build a boat put my camera on the boat with me and we can sail to England and go visit Dimbola, Julia Margaret's Cameron's house. So if you don't see me around, go look for me on the high seas with my camera. <laughs> Bye everybody, have a good day. <laughs>